we're just going to start assembling some of the parts um, according to this diagram. So the first thing we're going to do is bolt this to the vented disc. There we are. Um, everything's pretty clearly labelled. You've got uh, descriptions of every nut and bolt here and they basically match with the descriptions here so you know what to use. Instructions for bolting these together are to use these bolts, uh, a Torx drive in there, and use Loctite 271 and do them up to 25 foot pounds of torque. These come with actually multiple um, holes drilled in them for the studs. So I've just put them on the wheel to check whether we want the, uh, if you like, the inner set or the outer set. The next thing we want to do is mount these wheel studs uh, through this. Uh, then they've got to be torqued to 77 foot-pounds. The next thing I'm going to do is pack this larger inner bearing with grease and put it in here and then fit the grease seal which goes in that way not that way according to the diagrams. Um, I always thought that you just sort of got lots of grease on your hands and squished it through the, the rollers in the bearing. Um, you know that might work if you do it for a long time but there is actually a correct technique for doing this which involves putting a pair of gloves on, a big blob of grease on your left hand and with your right hand you sort of go like this, like this, squishing down into the grease till it starts to come up here. Well, I've been squishing the bearing down into the blob of grease in the palm of my hands and you can see here at about, um, what, 10 o'clock, it's starting to squeeze up through the, the gap between the inner and the outer um, rings. The bearings have just been placed in, so now we put the uh, grease seals in. There's different ways of doing this, but I, I just used a piece of uh, MDF and just gradually tapped it in with a hammer. If uh, you put your wheel on to this, that's that side, and uh, any contact surfaces of the wheel are on the are outside this alloy rim, then you have to use these slightly wider spaces so you get proper contact. The next thing we have to do is mount this like that with these five bolts like that and we've got to tighten them to 45 foot pounds with Loctite 271 on the threads. This just keeps dirt out of my bearing. So this is the assembly so the next step now is uh, slide this onto the spindle, a bit more grease inside probably, manually grease the smaller outer bearings, push them in, washer, castle nut, split pin, check that the cap fits here, if it doesn't uh, you can use slightly thinner washers. Along with this kit it recommends that you get um, a flexi brake line kit, part number 220-8307 so you get two nice braided lines and you get a selection of fittings uh, and this is our caliper that came with the disc kit disc conversion kit so now this is boring but it's important um, it's obvious what these do these connect to the hard brake lines and these are the clips that mount them to the body and you can see they have a kind of taper there which matches the conical taper in there. So far so good. Next thing then, how do we connect this end, which is the same kind of fitting, exactly the same, to our caliper. It goes in under this little hole here, so if we pull the tab off carefully, just to keep that safe, keeps the dust out. Right, there's a thread there, and then this 90 degree bend, one end of it, with the uh, conical taper on it, same as this, goes into a line, this end goes into our caliper, it gives you a 90 degree bend. So they've even got caps on. This one is marked U 3 eighths, and this one is marked 1 eighth. Now clearly that's not 
one eighth of an inch. In fact, it looks bigger than that one. You'd also notice that one's not tapered. This one is tapered. So we need to do some homework. What's going on here? Um, the Wheelwood kit comes with loads of instructions, a whole book of instructions. There's nothing on this, how to fit this to this. Uh, it's important because if you go on the forums, people complain that these seals sometimes, these joints sometimes weep fluid, break fluid. Um, they're tapered. If you force them in, it has been known for people to actually crack the aluminium here because they force them in too tight. Also, you'll notice there's nothing on the threads. Sometimes you see a kind of white sealer on these taper fit threads. You do with gas fittings, some uh, compressed air fittings. Um, not so here. So what's going on? And even more, if you just put it in with your fingers, it'll only go in about one turn of the thread and then it gets jammed. Uh, and it's almost like you don't want to force it anymore. So we need to do some reading. Right, we've done some reading. So this is a tapered thread. It's 1 8 27 um, NPT. NPT is National Pipe Thread Classification. Uh, it's an American classification. It was designed for, for pipes and plumbing fittings. Um, and the bottom line is, uh, you don't just force it in. It's a bit like tapping a thread. You turn it till it's finger tight and then uh, if it's only in a couple of turns, it's not enough. It should never go in all the way. The whole point is that it, it, it binds kind of halfway in and forms a seal. So the guidelines are um, that you turn it till it feels a bit stiff, then you back it off, turn it a bit more, back it off, turn it a bit more, and it'll go a little bit more each time as you uh, burnish the threads, apparently, and you don't put too much force on it so you don't crack the aluminium. Then when you've got it, so it's you know about halfway in, something like that, then at that point you might, once you know which direction you want it to point, that way or that way, for example, um, you, you, you know what you want to do, you then use uh, a sealer. I've done exactly what they said. I was very careful when I first put it in not to strip the threads, cross the threads, and then I just worked it back and forth, holding it here, round and round and round, not, not applying too much force. Uh, and you can see it's about halfway in. Here is another small but important detail. Um, when you bolt your wheel on, it doesn't contact the face that it bolts to uniformly over the face. It contacts it at certain points. In fact, you can see them here, here, here. And this is why they say that if the contact points of your wheel overhang this aluminium disc, so they're out here, then you have to use the steel spacer ring. So this is being filmed on the left side or the driver's side of the car. So this is the front of the car. So we have the plate towards the front. These are supplied in the kit. You put thread lock on them and you do them up to 47 foot pounds. These are the lower two. This is the lower bolt. It's longer than the original that's on the other side still um, to allow for the plate. That's 140 foot pounds. Uh, so I, I could use the old bearing, but I'm not. I'm going to use the nice new bearing. And we've packed it with grease using the correct technique. So we just carefully put that in there, onto this. Um, I don't know if you meant to. I'm going to put a little bit of extra grease just in here. Then we've, we'll use the original um, nut as well. It goes on here. Right, so we'll do that up. <laughs> And I've, uh, I've now just put the nut cover on with the tangs lined up with the hole so I can get my split pin through. Pin going in. Next thing is to screw on the Willwood dust cap. It's got an O-ring in it which is what makes it seal and not undo again. There's my, there's my bolt with the washer on the back side and two large shims on the inside and we'll swing the caliper in and uh, bolt it up and see how that looks. Test fitted it, two shims is okay. So I'm now gonna put a bit of Loctite on the end of the threads of the bolt and um, do it up properly. If you meant to do these up to 40 foot pounds, um, I certainly won't go any higher than that. Because you've got these clinch nuts pushed through an aluminium plate. Um, so I wouldn't wanna damage those. So put the pads in, which are held into the caliper by this simple 
single pen which goes through here which is pretty straightforward um, personally I usually put a bit of copper grease on the back of these just very small amount here's some uh, copper grease this sort of thing um, it, it's often stops the brake squealing obviously I'm, I've not touched the front the surfaces of the pads at all I just haven't touched them and these go in they're held by little spring clips top and bottom okay I've put a slight twist on this because uh, if you just have it round in an arc um, the tyre will rub it right I'm pressure ble bleeding the brakes now well using a relatively low pressure using one of these pressure systems and a homemade adapter for the circular reservoir I've got a separate video on this you see it works pretty well Right, how do you tighten up this nut? Well, there's about three ways that I've seen so far. Uh, first one, spin the wheel. As you're spinning it, and I've only got one hand because I'm filming, so imagine we're spinning it. You tighten this up with the grips till it just starts to bind. And then you go back uh, about a quarter turn. The last one I've seen is socket on it with a torque wrench and you do it up to 90 inch pounds which is about 7.5 foot pounds while you're spinning the wheel here like this you turn and turn and turn till it clicks at 7.5 which isn't very tight and then back it off um, about uh, quarter turn J pony parts fitting Wilwood calipers to a Mustang I'll just show you this clip a little bit of seal on this and we're going to thread the fitting in the back of the caliper okay, he said he put sealant on it first right we've got this guy that used a sealant as well it's Loctite 545 thread sealant and then in the comments was flamed out for putting Loctite on pipe thread fittings you must always use Teflon tape. Pegasus Auto Racing Supplies, who got a really good article on MPT fittings, was this article that explained how you burnish the threads by uh, rotating them in a little bit each, each back and forth till they go in about halfway. And it said, once you've uh, finished, you apply a thread sealant. How about an engineering forum? Some engineers wouldn't know, surely. Um, well, clearly... There's a discussion that's been going on about tape versus sealants for MPT threads forever. Apparently they're, they're people just arguing about it on car websites forevermore. So I can see why now Willwood don't give you any instructions on this at all. Whereas every other aspect of their kit, they, they do give comprehensive detailed instructions. On this forum, somebody actually have some instructions from Willwood, which I don't have which state that um, they should use uh, Loctite 545 if you're using an NPT thread on a brake system, but otherwise not. The most sensible advice I've seen is if you use PTFE tape or a thread sealant, you make sure none of it is on the first two turns so nothing can disappear off downstream. How about the NSRA? They'll know. Yeah, surely. Well, this guy here says never use PTFE. Small particles could come off it. Um, just a little lube. Some people say use PTFE. Um, officially, they're supposed to just tighten up and not leak at all anyway. Um, but most people seem to agree that, in fact, they do. Finally, Hot Rod magazine use thread sealant. Use thread sealant here. Always something, isn't there? Um, I was going to put the wheel on, and then I realised that my anti-clockwise bolts are now clockwise bolts. So I need to get some clockwise, uh, sorry, wheel nuts um, that go the right way. Uh, ah, there you go.